So hello everyone, I am Tom from Overleaf and I will be leading you through this webinar. So today's topic of the webinar is effective collaboration with Overleaf. And we will show you several ways how to collaborate effectively with our system, with our software, um, because collaboration is the key to good results and the key to good research. So I will first show you an overview of the fun functions, and then I will switch to Overleaf itself, and I will demo most of the functions directly in Overleaf. So um, there are several things how you can collaborate with Overleaf. The most important, obviously, is that you can share your projects with other users. Um, there are basically two ways how to do this. Either you switch off on the thing we call the link sharing, which provides you with tokens, short or long links um, that allow you to that you can you can share with your colleagues and they can join the projects. So basically, anyone with the link can can join the project. We also allow sharing with specific people based on their email addresses. So if you want to have better control over who can access the project, then you can use the name people sharing or email based based sharing. Uh, note that this is available only to users with a subscription. The few free users can share the project only with one more collaborator, and then based based on what subscription you can you get, it's more. Also, you can decide that you let the person to be in the edit mode or read only mode. So if you want someone just to be able to see the project but not to modify, then you can do it also. Then when you share the project with someone and you want to see what the present people are doing in the project, you can use the tech changes. So basically you see directly the changes that the people make and you can, can decide to accept or reject the changes. Um, people can comment on specific pieces of the code. Even people with the read-only rights can comment on pieces of the code in Overleaf. Um, then obviously what we allow is that the people can, can work on the project at the same time, even like in the same place and on the same paragraph. It can be a bit strange when you work on the same word, for example, but even that works. Then a very useful feature when you collaborate on Overleaf is that you can label specific versions in time and then get back to the versions or compare the versions between, for instance, the current version or and the older version. And also, if you have a subscription, you can see all the history, not just the labeled version, but basically any version that was the project that the project was in in the history. And last but not least, we have chat, which allows you to sort of chat with your collaborators about any topics. I just want to make sure that if you have any questions, you can ask them now, and I will see whether we answer them during the presentation or whether we leave more time in the end for the questions. So I will now switch directly to Overleaf and show you how the functions work. So, I mean, this is one project in Overleaf. It's project for the slides for this webinar. And if I want to share the project, then I go to top right to the share function. And if I click share, then I can see, I mean, I'm, I have a subscription at Overleaf, so I can both then on the link sharing. So if I do so, then anyone with the link could use, could, could, could open the project and modify it based on which link he cho chooses. So, I mean, if, if, you, if you give the first link to the people, then they can open the project and edit it. If you give the second link, then they can only read it and not edit it. But I maybe don't want to do it now, so I will switch off link sharing. But I can also share the project with specific people. So let's say that I want to share this project with Jerry. And Jerry has email address jerry at example.net. So I click it and I click share. I want Jerry to be able to edit the project. And immediately Jerry gets an email address, uh, an email message with information that I shared the project with him. And now if Jerry opens the project, opens Overleaf or, or, or clicks the link in his email address, then he can join the project. Now I see that he joined the project because the message that he has not joined yet disappeared and he can open the project. 
And I immediately see that Jerry opened the project because I see on top that there is this J saying Jerry Mouse. So I know, okay, yes, Jerry is in the project. I can even see where Jerry is. Okay, Jerry is at the, at the beginning of the file. And now if Jerry starts writing something, he can obviously. So let's say that he wants to make a modification and I don't see Jerry's cursor now where Jerry is. So if I click Jerry mouse on the top, I can see yes. Okay, so he, he he's on this line in the code, but I don't see what edit he direct, directly he did, but maybe I want to know what Jerry is doing with the project. So I switch on the track changes. To do this, I go to review. And if I click review, I can switch on the track changes here. And let's say that I switch it for everyone. So everyone's changes are now tracked. So if now, I can close this again. If now Jerry makes any modification, then the modification is made, but I can see here in the middle that Jerry changed nice C to capital C because he changed the, the lowercase C to capital. So basically he removed the word nice. And I'm like, Okay, why not? I mean, that's an extra word that need, need not be there, so I accept the change. But let's say that now Jerry makes some other modification, for example, that he does this. So now he makes a modification. I am like, what did you do? And he did edit and track changes, but I am now thinking, but we already have track changes in the text. So I reject the change and it disappears and goes back to the original state. And so that's the track changes. Basically the basic idea is that I see whatever he does and I can accept or reject the changes. Okay, comments work quite in a similar way. So if now, for example, I say this and so I, I select the text simultaneous edits and I say add comment and I say, Jerry, please um, expand on this comment. So the comment is now attached to the text. And both of us can see the comment. And if you click here and if you open the comment, you see that you said, Jerry, please expand on this. And Jerry can go to the comment and say, OK, I'll do it tomorrow. And when Jerry does it, I can see, yes, there is a comment from me. Jerry, please expand on this. Okay, I will do it tomorrow. I don't want to resolve the comment yet because there is still something to, to do it up about it, but I can resolve the comment and it will disappear from here and appear in the resolved comments, which are on top of the middle pane. So there I could see the, the, the resolved comment. So maybe if I make a comment here, for example, okay, sorry, um, make a comment here, random comment. And I resolve it, then it appears in the list of resolved comments, and I can just delete the comment completely, and so on. So all this works quite fluently. Um, so that's about track changes and comments. We have a question about the track changes, whether it appears only to the owner, overly shows it to everyone. So Basically, you still have to be in agreement with your collaborators, whether they accept or not the track changes. So if you don't want them to accept the train changes, you should dis discuss it with them. Overly will allow anyone to, to accept or reject the track changes. So that's maybe about the track changes and comments. Now, simultaneous edi edits, if I just see that Jerry Mouse is here, then I can really just at any text directly where Jerry Mouse is. And I can at any, at any text and Jerry Mouse is just at the same space, place where he was before. And he can just modify the same line as well. You know, whatever he, he does, it, it works. And now you can see that there is quite a lot of track changes for this piece of text. So. The track changes panel can get quite cluttered when you edit a lot of place, things at the same place. So, you know, you have to use it wisely not to get these sort of clutters. 
Um, but I mean, here we can probably just accept all of them and that's it. Um, so yes, simultaneous edits work quite nicely. And it's, it's a useful feature that you can really edit the code simultaneously. Obviously, you can edit it like in different places, in different files at the same time. That works quite. I mean, it's it's easier for for people to get organized when they don't work at the same place, but you can. Um, yeah. So to the to the history and label versions. So if you go to the top to the history history button, then a different view of the project opens, and you can see on the right you can see all the versions of the project if you are a subscriber if you are on the free plan you can see the versions only from the latest 24 hours and you can select any version you can see what, how the version looks like so you can basically go through the code as you need you can also compare the version to another version with the button in the middle so if you if i click this and now i'm in the compare mode and i can just for example compare the current version which is on the very top on the right with let's say the version just after the project was created and i can see that there was quite a number of changes made some text removed some text added here and you can see who added the text and when was the edition made so you can also see that i tom added this text today like a couple of minutes ago and jerry added this single single word in between at the same time and so on and so on so this is possible and if i go back to view single version then I can decide that I label, for example, the original version of this project. And I say label version and I say original and label. And now I can see the label here. And if I switch to labels, I can just see the label versions. And this is the feature that's available also to our free users. And so that's it about simultaneous edit labels, versions, and project history. And next feature that we want to discuss here is the chat so if you go to the very right then you can chat about anything in the project um basically it's up it's up to you what you chat about so i can say hi jerry and jerry sees the message hi jerry now and if i close the chat and jerry replies hi tom then I can see, yes, here I have this bouncing, bouncing icon here saying that I have a one unread message. And if Jerry continues before I open this, the thing, then I can see that there are two unread messages. And if I open it, I see that Jerry said, hi, Tom, you will never catch me. Oh, goodness. And I can reply, I will, of course, stop this. So, I mean, the chat can be used for like small talk like this, but it can be used also obviously to discuss features or discuss like bigger planning of the project. The chat is persistent. So, I mean, whatever you put in the chat stays there. So even if like other people join the project, the chat is visible to them. So it can be really used to discuss like larger things about the project. So the chat is different from the comments that the comments are sort of bond to the specific place and also they can be resolved and they basically disappear from the view whereas the chat is persistent in the sense that you can get the history of the messages all the time so um, that's the last feature i wanted to speak about so now we have time for for questions if you want to ask anything about how to collaborate with Overleaf, then now it's the time. Ah, okay, so we have a question that a user says, my comments shifted to the end of the document. It only happened once, but what should I do? Um, yeah, well, this is this can happen sometimes at Overleaf. I can actually, I think, show it even in this project. So we have a comment, only one of them. So let's add another comment. I will add a comment here, random comment. And if I keep the comments there, and I just actually usually when this happens is if the text is accidentally removed and re-entered. 
So if I just sort of like remove the text and enter it again, then basically Overleaf loses track of where the comments were. So the track comments should appear at the end of the document, which they don't in this case for some reason. Okay, I, sorry, I think that I messed now or something. Okay, but this can happen if you do this with, with the text. I don't know why it didn't happen this time, but it can happen. And if it happens, then you can reach the Overleaf support and um if they and we can we can have a look at it and usually we can recover the comments at their original locations because we keep track of the locations somewhere inside of the system um okay the next question is if is there a way to edit files in overly from another latex editor without downloading the project yes there is we have basically two ways how to do this first users can link the, the overleaf account with the dropbox account and this means that the projects are synchronized simultaneously with the dropbox account and they can edit the files locally on the dropbox and this will be reflected on overleaf and vice versa and also we allow linkage to github or something which we call the git bridge so it need not be only github it can be and basically another system that uses Git to synchronize. Okay, next question is, someone shared a project with me that I don't want to see. Okay, if this is the case, then you can go to your dashboard. So basically you leave the project with this little icon on top left and go back to the overview dashboard. And for example, I have this test of blah, 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 something project here that I don't want to see. And I can just do trash or archive, doesn't matter at this moment basically confirm. So I put this project in trash and I don't see it anymore. If I really want the project not to be shared with me, then I have to go back to my trash projects. And from here, I can leave the project. Okay, ah, sorry, this is my project, so I cannot do it. I'm sorry, I confused you a bit this moment. So if I do it, wait a moment. Um, if I do it from Jerry's point of view. So if I show you how Jerry's look, uh, uh, Jerry's dashboard looks like, then he has this project that we just worked on, owned by Tomcat. And if I want to, if Jerry wants to leave the project, he just can put the project in trash and now go to trash projects. And here he can leave the project for good. So we have this warning, this action cannot be undone because if you leave the project, then you have to ask the owner of the project to share it with you again. And if you do this, then Jerry cannot access the project that we just worked on anymore. Okay, then next question. If a message in the chat can be directed to only one of the people whom the project was shared? No, this is unfortunately not the case. So the chat is open to all collaborators on the project. This is basically to simplify the things. So the chat is visible to everyone. Um, then a the question, if there is a way to see only changes from a specific author in the history, this is not really the case, but if you go to all history, then you can see which edits were made, made by which users. So you can see that, okay, these two edits were just made by me. And this edit, well, there, there was a simultaneous edit by more people. And you can basically see who made the changes if you go to compare to another version and here you see who made the changes it's colored so i mean even even here you see added by you added by jerry mouse added by you so you can see who made which changes also if you go to the left then you can see which files were edited between the two versions we compare. So just this one, one file was edited. And if the edits are above or below on the on the on the file in the editor, then we have this little button, three more updates above. And if we go there, then we can see the edits. So it's quite easy to go through the edits that were made between two specific versions. Uh, okay, question about how to navigate the history. Yes, if I want to select a specific version and I have the view single version, so that's the basic thing when you enter the history, then yes, I just click on the version 
And when I click the version, I see the version of, of, of the project in the time. And I can, for example, download the project at this version, or label it. And basically, the same goes for compared to another version. I just have these two handles that I move up and down as needed. OK, then a question, which features are available with a free account, whether I could re repeat it. So if I go back to the slides, so basically this is the slides, then the, the, the features in black are available to everyone. And the features in green are, are available only to users with a subscription. So basically the free version has comments, simultaneous edits, and label versions, chat. And also you can use the link sharing for the free version. Then the, the subscription version has added sharing with specific people. So um, that's another question actually that we have just now, how many people I can share the project with. That depends on the subscription. You can actually share it with one person on the free uh, subscription. And then it's six other people for the student subscription, 10 people for the collaborator subscription, and unlim unlimited number of people for the professional subscriptions. And also note that if you have a subscription, for example, via your institution, then, um, then you have the professional account, so you have unlimited people on your projects if you want. OK, next question is, um, if you are stuck, when you can get help from? I will get to it by the end of the webinar, but basically we have our own system of help pages and also we have a support team which i am a member of that can help you with a lot of issues that you face in overleaf also minor issues in latex so if you are stuck with something also in the latex coding then we are willing to help you as well uh, okay then very important question that i didn't mention so thanks for asking whether the people working with me on my project need to have a paid account to have these features for most features, no, that's not the case. So the features are bound to the project. So if the project owner has a subscription, then all users can benefit from the features on the project. So when, when the owner of the project has a subscription, then all these features are available. The only exception is the Git features and the Dropbox features. So for these, you have to be, you have to have a, have a subscription to be, to be able to link your project to Dropbox or Git or GitHub. Okay, then an interesting question, whether it is better to use commenting function or the chat. So, I mean, that depends probably on what you prefer and how you like to go about the things. So I will just mention the biggest differences. The comments are nice because they are localized. So they really just go to specific places in the text. So, I mean, this comment just really goes to simultaneous edits to this part of the text. And you can discuss very specific bits of the code, so very specific bits of your text, of your project. And it's easy to sort of follow the threads in the comments because you can really just continue speaking here. Thank you. And thank you is really bound to the same piece of text. So you can have a like little sub conversation in the comments, which is not possible in the chat. On the other hand, the chat is quite prominently visible because I mean, it shows to everyone. You can see that you have new chat messages. So the chat is good to discuss like larger things. For instance, remind someone that he has some whatever, that you agreed on some deadlines on the project or something. So um, yes, the chat has the advantage of like being on in one place. So you can discuss sort of larger things in the chat. Or just use the chat as like small talk place and use the comments for serious talk about the project. So we have two more questions now. Um, one is whether we are planning to add Google Drive support at this moment, or whether we have it already. No, we don't have Google Drive support at this moment, but it's one thing that's on our radar. So if you want this feature, then maybe just um, write to support at overleaf.com with your inquiry, and we will sort of mention it to our colleagues that are responsible for for shaping the project in the future, shaping Overleaf in the future, and we will see what can be done. So then there is a question about 
uh, work from home offer. So yes, we are currently still for about a week running our work from home offer, which basically gives professional account to our users for free if they ask for it. So if you want to know more about this, then you either can see it in your dashboard. If you go to your dashboard, then there, there are links to, to see how to get this free upgrade. And um, also there is a blog post about it in our blog. So if you navigate to our blog, then you can see it as well and see how to go about it. Then there is a question about any chance to get access to bibliography editors such as SciWheel, previously F1000. Um, we don't link to SciWheel, but we do not do link to Mendeley and Zotero. So if you have a professional or any subscription account, then you can link your project to, a, to your Mendeley library or to your, or to your Zotero library. Also, any system that can export the VIB file is is able to, I mean, you can just export the file and import it into your project and just work this way. I know we know it's not, not optimal because, I mean, you have to do it anytime you update your library, but it is doable. For Mendeley and Zotero, it's much more straightforward. Uh, okay, then we have a question whether the different people on the project can rename the project basically on their own, so put different name to the project. No, that's not the case. The project has one title and that's sort of like intrinsic part of the project. But what you can do is if you go to your dashboard, you can start, you can make folders. So if you make folder, then you can sort of organize your projects. So if someone gives a name to the project and you are not sure you will remember what it is, you can just create a folder which is descriptive of what this sort of type project is. So if you are on a specific whatever grant application, and you have several projects related to that, you can just make a folder and this can help you keep organized when the projects in the dashboard. So we are reaching the end of the webinar. So I will switch back to the slides and just mention last couple of things. Um, we have a lot of documentation, both on Overleaf and on, on Lake Tech. So if you go to overleaf.com slash learn, then you can reach the documentation and there is quite a lot of it. So if you are stuck with something or you, or you want to learn more, then you can go there and see. Then also, if you have any support questions or any further questions, um, then you can go to overleaf.com slash contact and contact us via this way, or you can do, go, go to support at overleaf.com, write us an email and we will see what can be done. As I said, I'm a member of the support team and we are trying to answer all questions that users have and help them whenever they, whenever we can. And also one last thing before we close up, we do run more webinars than just this one. So if you are interested, about, interested in them, you can follow us on Twitter, follow our blog, or just visit overleaf.com slash events slash webinars and just see what other webinars we offer. Also, we have webinars on demand, so there are recordings of past webinars that you can just go through and see. And so that's all I have for you for today's webinar, and we hope to see you in the future. Thank you.